Hi, I'm John Sherman, and today is August 31st, 2014, and we're at the Midwest Skydive Reunion in uh, uh, Michigan, somewhere up here in Ray, Michigan. It has been a ball. I think I'll start with how I got here. As a kid, I went to military school. I went to Fork Union Military Academy for junior high school. I came home for Christmas, and I came by myself in my military uniform with my red cape, red line cape, and I had to change trains in New York, in Manhattan, from one terminal to another back then. I was going on the train from Virginia to Massachusetts, where my home was. I walked through Times Square, and in Times Square there was a great big billboard with a skydiver by the name of Jim Arinder blowing smoke rings and smoking camel cigarettes. Perfect smoke rings. Each puff off of this giant billboard in Times Square. I, I was a teenager. It knocked me out. I later went through high school and went to college, joined the Army, and before I was being transferred, uh, I finished my basic initial training and I was shipping out to Germany and on the way over, I saw a Life magazine cover. Life magazine cover of an airborne trooper in an airborne tuck going out of the airplane. And the picture was taken from below him looking up, and you could see the bottom of his boots. And the bottom of his boots, the sole was flat. There was no heel. And there was a big C stamped where the heel would be. And that C stood for Cochrane. Come to find out, this was a Cochrane boot made in Stoughton, North Carolina, uh, Stoughton, Massachusetts, sorry. And they were the elite boot of the Airborne. That's what the, the Army didn't issue them. So I got over to Germany, and my first leave back home to the States, I went to Stoughton, which was 15 miles from where I grew up in North Attleboro. Got myself two pairs of Stoughton. Of, uh, of, what did they say the name was? Pair boots. They, they were the Stoughton jump boot, and they spit shine so beautifully. I put zippers in one side, in one set of boots. But anyway, that was my st first attractions to skydiving. And I ran into a guy in Germany by the name of Phil Miller, who was an 18-year-old kid had gone ashore in Normandy, who was battlefield commissioned in, North in Korea. He got, became a captain, and when I knew him, he was a captain, and he wanted to start a skydiving club. This was 1958 in Schweinfurt, Germany. Needless to say, I volunteered, jumped right into it. And we jumped, we made our first jump at Con Concern, Con Barracks, in Schweinford. And I uh, made the first, been watching him. Oh, this is, this is good. This really affected me later when I became an instructor. I watched Captain Miller demonstrate exits. And he would stand, the UNA otters that we were using had a side door, like the otters that most of the skydivers jump today. And he had to squat a little bit in the door, so he taught us to squat with our feet in front of each other in the door. But the interesting thing is he would go out sideways, and because he's on the ground, he would arch like this. So I did that on my first jump, and I opened my eyes, and I was looking up at Phil, who was looking down at me, shaking his head. Oh, Jesus. So my opening came. I was off 28 flat with a single blank gore, 24-foot T-10A reserve, and a before pack pack, single blank gore. We later learned that that was a highly malfunctionable design. Anyway, I made my jump. I landed like a ton of bricks out in the field. I got up and I packed my parachute right now. And I put the parachute back on and made the second load. And Miller's loading us up for the second load. And he said, didn't I just put you out? Weren't you on your back? Said, yes, sir. Get in a fucking plane. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to go. I got a second jump. So the second jump, I went out and I went flat and stable face to earth because I learned my lesson. Now, when I became an instructor in 182s, I changed the method of instruction from jumping backward and arching to just jumping sideways and falling forward and being caught, catching the so they would lay on the air. So that affected me. All of those early things, Cochrane boots that don't snag lines because they got continuous heels. You know, all of those early things taught me about that. Well, I only got to make eight jumps back then. I got my, 
grandfather and grandmother died, and I came back to the States, and I was finished my military service at Fort Devens in Massachusetts and as an ROTC instructor. <laughs> if you can believe that. Anyway, I taught hand-to-hand -hand combat, as a matter of fact. I also was involved with the Long Range Reconnaissance Patrol programs in, uh, with the Corps, and uh, got a lot of extra training with that. But I got out of the service and decided I wanted to roam the world, and I did for eight years, but I got back to Massachusetts, and there was a fellow from Boston, Brad Strauss, and I think he's D-16, a good friend of Ted Strong's. Brad had a little operation in Mansfield, Massachusetts, so I went over and made a couple jumps with Brad, and that stoked my interest again, and I laid off for a while and didn't have any money to pursue it. I got married, and boy, that settled me down, I started having money, and I was uh, got a job with Chrysler Corporation as an engineer, and I had money, and Bill Hughes was in Rockford, Illinois, and he had a little skydive operation out of a tri-pacer. So Bill worked for Chrysler, was a foreman at Chrysler, as I was initially, and he uh, brought me over to uh, Dixon, Tennessee, uh, Dixon, Illinois, Dixon, Tennessee, listen, that. Dixon, Illinois, I think it's Ronald Reagan's home, and we set up a little drop zone outside of there, and, and I did a demo in my eighth jump with them, with a rag, a, what was a double L, and I landed on, on the edge of the Rock River, has a 50-foot precipice, precipice along the bank of the river, and this park at the top of it, and the park was a baseball field. And I was jumping with a, Dave was his first name, and I can't remember his last, Richter maybe, and he said, when you do demos, you crash and burn. And I said, no, you can't do that. Now remember, we're jumping rags, 28 C9s. So I came in, and, and like I said, it's my eighth jump with these people, I'm doing demos. We had a good spot, I brought it in, landed it, oh, right next to Pitcher's Mound, turned into the wind and did a stand-up and peed my pants. <laughs> the impact was so hard, it bruised my kidneys and I peed my pants in an orange jumpsuit. <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, Dave came in and took second base out and then took third base out. So the crowd loved that, and they didn't see my wet jumpsuit, which I covered with my canopy as I policed it up and got the hell out of there. <laughs> well, anyway, that's Dixon, Tennessee. Go look it up on Dixon, Illinois. Go look up the Rock River on Google. You'll see what a precipice that is. <laughs>